The new Black Clover chapter is just crazy because it was revealed that Yami slaughtered his entire family except for his little sister Ichika and Ryu if Ryu is related to the Yami clan. So our prediction came true that Yami is a hated person because he must have done something in relation to his family, which is why Ichika hates him now. However, those of you who follow our weekly reviews know that we don't trust Ryu, the land of the rising sun or Yami's story of how he ended up in the Clover Kingdom because it just doesn't add up. Whether he's aware that he's lying or someone has manipulated his memories, wouldn't be the first time something like that happened in Black Clover. And this new revelation once again confirms our suspicions. I think at this point we finally have your attention and people will now be more open to questioning the land of the rising sun. It's possible that our suspicions about Ryo are true, that he could be working with Lucius, whether it's intentional or not. He could have been the one who slaughtered the entire Yami clan and then blamed it all on Yami Sukehiro, erased his memory and then sent him to the Clover Kingdom, where Lucius then continued his plan with Julius Novacrono. Or maybe Lucius erased Yami's memory when he arrived. And now, years later, for some reason, Lucius sent Asta to Ryu, who was already awaiting his arrival. Is Ryu evil and working with Lucius, or does Ryu just know the truth because of his eye, but for some reason doesn't tell anyone about it? Could Lucifugus, who is most likely the devil of dark magic, have something to do with it due to the fact that the Yami clan possesses dark magic? Or could possibly even Astaroth the time devil be involved somehow? After all, Ryu can see through time, and so can Lucius. There's a lot to talk about. If you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. Please enjoy this video. Let's go! The new Black Clover chapter begins with the introduction of three new Ryuzen 7. As always, let's take a closer look at the meaning of the names. Let's start with a girl named Amari Kamari. In Japan, the meaning of Amari depends on the writing system used. If the Japanese kanji writing system is used, which is clearly the case, then Amari refers to a city meaning clothing or garment. And that fits perfectly with her personality because she's all about fashion. She dyes her hair white, gets a tan, always wears fancy clothes and makeup and probably smells like a cupcake. Her last name Kamari means more or less beautiful and lovely in Japanese. So together it makes beautiful clothing. Makes sense. By the way, based on her hair and the lightning symbols, she probably has lightning magic just like Luck. Looking at Amari, she reminds me a lot of Luck and his personality. Though not the addiction to fighting, but the passion she has for something specific. For Luck, it's the passion for combat and for her it's fashion. The next one is Ukadai Zeman. Okada means hill rice paddy. And Zayman means left, protect, gate. Whatever that might mean. And the last person is called Hanagatsu. I couldn't find anything about Hanagatsu. Maybe there's something to do with the mask. This person wears a Henya mask, which represents the soul of a woman who has become a demon due to possession or jealousy. The Henya mask is said to be demonic and dangerous, but also sad and tormented, reflecting the complexity of human emotions. Henya masks come in a variety of colors. A white mask indicates a woman of fine character. So maybe the person behind the mask is actually a woman or has a feminine side. So much for that. Asta was introduced to these three Ryuzen because they are his next training partners. And so his second training session begins. And again, Asta gets beaten up from left to right. He has absolutely no chance. Speaking of no chance, in the last chapter we said that Asta lost to Ichika even though he was in the Devil Union. And many told us that it's not the Devil Union, it's just the Devil Mode. We said this because Asta himself mentioned that he was in the Devil Union, but we agree. Based on the form itself, it looks like it's the full Devil Mode. Either the form itself was drawn wrong or the text is wrong. But based on the power level, it's hard to imagine Ichika being stronger than Asta Devil Union. Because then it's really suspicious. Why the Land of the Rising Sun hasn't come to help defeat the Dark? tried when they even have Ryu seeing everything and thus could easily prevent the worst from happening. Unless of course they have some sort of restriction as to why they can't leave the land of the rising sun. Perhaps for the same reason Asa can't leave without help. Anyway, the three newly introduced Ryuzen show keen interest in Asta. They all talk about all kinds of things until finally Ryu shows up. And then suddenly, they all start cheering him on like he's a total superstar in this country. And that's very confusing to me. Because if we compare it to how people behave towards Julius Novacrono, we can see that Julius was treated with calm respect. 
they either bowed to him or showed their respect in other ways. But here Ryu shows up and they literally start to simp, jump and celebrate, as if they are one big family. Is this normal? What did Ryu do to deserve such treatment? Another big difference is that Julius is respected as the wizard king, but the people's loyalty is solely to the Clover Kingdom. They entrust the safety of their land to Julius and expect him to do everything he can to protect their homeland and in return they pay him respect. But in Ryo's case, they hail him as a person. They say things like for Ryo's sake and not for the sake of the land of the rising sun. So the people of the Clover Kingdom serve the country, but the people of the land of the rising sun serve the Shogun. It is a much more personal devotion as if they are willing to die for Ryu, almost as if he is the king of the land of the rising sun and not the protector. It seems as if the Ryzen are protecting Ryu and not the land of the rising sun itself. Really strange. Especially considering that absolutely no one in the city even recognized Ryu. Not even the bandits knew who Ryu was. The way the Ryzen literally idolized Ryu and the way the normal people didn't even recognize Ryu is a big difference, even though the citizen recognized Ichika immediately. Also the name Ryzen seems to be based specifically on the name Ryuya, as if this group was formed specifically just for Ryu and not for the land of the rising sun. This could then also explain their worship. The chapter continues with Asta resting from the hard day of training. He admits that he has absolutely no chance against the four members of the Ryuzen 7. Apparently Zedin is that strong. By the way, yesterday we published an amazing theory about the Zedin technique and Asta's new magic. Be sure to check it out, the link to the video is in the comments, the feedback is very very good. Feel free to watch it after you finish this review here. Asta says that none of the Ryzen used magic, in a way the use of Yoryuku is itself already magic, so Zedin is a way of using magic because this technique directly uses magical power, which is literally the definition of magic. What Asta understood on that day of training is that there are different ways to use Zedin, depending on the different types of people. Some people use a power of 10 in just 2 kicks, while others use a power of 2 but with 5 hits each. Both versions use the same energy but distribute it differently. Asta then looks up at the sky and finds that it is very cloudy. Usually such moments in Black Clover are not just random, but have a deeper meaning that we may not understand until much later. So the cloudy sky over the land of the rising sun could be a foreshadowing or have a symbolic meaning. It is the land where the sun is supposed to shine. But here we see all the clouds, which could indicate that something about this land is not as happy and free as it appears. This thought is reinforced by what was revealed about Yami at the end of this chapter, more on that in a moment. As Asta thinks about the cloudy sky, Ichika of the Yami clan suddenly appeared behind him. She confirmed that she's 24 years old. So to all of you who have been holding back, you're good. Me a good old we see some kind of monument or tombstone, something like that with a picture of a person who once again looks like Charmy. First the cafe doll, now this stone. In this regard, there's definitely some sort of mystery that has yet to be revealed. By the way, the way things are developing, it looks like both groups of people may eventually come together. That is, the people from the land of the rising sun and the people from the Clover Kingdom, especially the Black Bulls. So don't be surprised if the Black Bulls suddenly appear in the Clover Kingdom and along with Yami, if that's even physically possible since it seems impossible to cross the countries just like that without special preparation. Or maybe the Ryuzen 7 will follow Asta to the Clover Kingdom. Anyway, my partner will now continue with this Black Clover chapter review. Have fun. Ichika told us that she was asked by Ryu to watch over Asta. If you think about it, we can interpret this in two ways. Either Ryu is just being nice and is worried about Asta. After all, Asta is a guest in his country and he wants him to be treated well and have a good time. But keep in mind he can see everything with his right eye. So that doesn't make any sense. He already knows that Asta is doing fine. So this can also be interpreted in the opposite direction. As if Asta is not a guest but an intruder who needs to be observed at all time. Even though Ryu has been expecting his arrival. It could be that Ryu just doesn't trust Asta or wants to keep an eye on him. After all, we have learned that foreigners are not popular in the land of the rising sun and in fact are seen as the cause of all kinds of problems. So Ryu sent Ichiga as the person to keep an eye on Asta and control the things he does. The fact that Ryu can see what Asta is doing at all times with his eye indicates that he did not send Ichiga to watch over Asta, but so that Ichiga can do certain things. For example, to prevent Asta from running away or to prevent Asta from 
doing something or finding out something about the land of rising sun. Maybe a dark secret. The fact that Asta has tried to leave the land of rising sun several times but has not succeeded can be interpreted in two ways as well. Either he can't really leave the country or Ryu simply won't allow him and is lying to him. However, if Asta would try to leave, the reason might not allow him to do so. How should we know that Asta is really a guest and not a prisoner? Ichika goes on to say that despite his appearance, Ryu is a very busy person, serving in the still unstable administration of the Land of Rising Sun. From this, we can conclude that the Land of Rising Sun has a government problem, and from the way Ichika has phrased it, it seems that it's due to an event that took place in the past and not necessarily too long ago. We know that it has been said that foreigners are considered the core of all problems in the land of Hino. So perhaps the unstable administration has something to do with it. Perhaps it's based on an international conflict. Also, we know that Ryu has a lot of paperwork, just like the Visit King in the Clover Kingdom. So in that respect, they are very, very similar. But from how we met Ryu and how he was introduced, he didn't really seem to have much to do. He was literally waiting for Asa to arrive and then for him to wake up, only for him to leave for a sightseeing tour and then even training. But maybe that was just an exception. We know that Julius, for example, always seemed busy, but in reality, he always had a lot of time and spent it in traveling in search of great magic. Lucius often took the lead and did his own thing without Julius ever noticing. So I wouldn't be 100% naive in thinking that Ryu always does what he says. He could do something completely different if he really has something to hide. Ichika then confirms that Ryu has the ability to see all things in the present. This ability is called Tengensu or Clairvoyance. With this, he can see any phenomenon that's going on in the present and apparently even far beyond the borders of his own country because he can also see everything that's going on in the Clover Kingdom. And it seems that his power is not limited to the present but definitely to the future as well as he has demonstrated before. So considering that he can see everything in the present and in the future, it is not far-fetched to assume that he can also see into the past and thus fits the description of Asteroth. So the idea that he is either Asteroth himself or has Asteroth's eye is not unlikely. Ichigo also reveals that she worships him not only because he's a great man and a great shogun, but also he saved her and she therefore owes him her life. This does not necessarily mean that Ryu saved Ichiga from a dangerous situation, but could also refer to an emotional rescue. Some emotional struggle that Ichiga had where Ryu was there for her and gave her a purpose in her life. Of course, that could have something to do with the family tragedy that happened to the Yami clan. Yami apparently killed his entire family. I mean, can you believe that? The chapter ends with a flashback that begins with young Yami. This is a crazy revelation, but is it really the truth? Let's take a closer look. There are many things that don't add up with what Yami explained about how he ended up in the Clover Kingdom. He said that he came from a fishing family, which seems to be true based on the appearance in the flashback. He's in a fishing village, more or less wearing the clothes of a peasant and then goes fishing. But then he explains that he was shipwrecked in the Clover Kingdom, even though Ryu clearly stated that it was impossible for Asta to leave the land of the rising sun. An impossibility refers to any possibility, including the use of a normal boat. Asta, however, can move much faster and more effectively by simply flying. So even if that is impossible, then it's just madness to believe Yami's story. So Yami could not have been shipwrecked by accident, but it seems that someone might have helped him. It doesn't matter if he escaped on purpose, for example because he might have done something he was fleeing from, or the person responsible for Yami's shipwreck did it without Yami knowing about it. In any case, it doesn't look like Yami got to the Clover Kingdom without help, and it must have been planned by someone. But even if we ignore the inconsistencies in Yami's story, the fact that Yami never mentioned he had a sister is very suspicious. So generally speaking, we have to consider two possibilities here. Either Yami has lost his memory, which is why he never talked about his family, or he's lying for some reason. If he has lost his memory, then we can safely assume that whoever is responsible for Yami's shipwreck is also the one who killed Yami's family and then blamed Yami for it. This would mean that this person could very likely be working with Lucius, and that is why Yami's boat ended up in the Clover Kingdom. Upon arrival, Yami was then greeted by Lucius, who had changed his memory so that Yami could no longer remember Lucius nor his family, and has therefore no reason to go back to the Land of Rising Sun. And if Yami is simply lying, this would mean that he must logically have a reason for doing so, which in turn strongly suggests that he may indeed have something to do with the death of his family. The things we just explained apply only to the Clover Kingdom, but we also have the perspective of the land of the rising sun. There we have again two possibilities. 
Either Yami killed his family and fled the land of the rising sun, or he didn't and was just blamed for the slaughter of the Yami clan. If he was indeed responsible for the murder, he must have had a reason. Either his clan planned to do something terrible that he stopped, or maybe he had to protect someone. So, it's like he had to choose between his family and someone else. For example, he had to kill his family to save Ichika. Or maybe Yami was controlled somehow, for example, by a devil. Maybe Lucifugis, if Lucifugis is the dark magic devil. But, if Yami has nothing to do with the murder, then it means that someone else who is currently still in the Land of Rising Sun is responsible. This would be the person who accused Yami and is likely working with Lucius, or manipulating him. Of course, we must immediately suspect Ryu here, since he, like Lucius, possesses some kind of time magic that could establish a connection between the two. If Yami is indeed innocent, then the fact that Ryu most likely has the ability to see in the past is proof that Ryu is at least involved in some way, since he refuses to reveal the truth about Yami. Ichika believes a lie and Yami's name is dragged through the mud throughout the country, when in fact he is innocent. So Ryu is either part of the conspiracy or has a very good reason why he is maintaining this lie. Perhaps he simply cannot expose this lie because it would be very dangerous. For example, if an even stronger person has made the land of the rising sun their home and would begin to destroy the country if Ryu revealed the truth. Ryu like Lucius can possibly see certain timelines that show what would happen if certain things were done. So if he sees that land of the rising sun will be destroyed if he tells the truth about Yami, then it would make sense why he would keep such a lie for all these years. Either way, the person responsible for Yami's family's death must most likely be working with Lucius. Because that makes the fact that Lucius let Asta live and even teleported him to the Land of the Rising Sun much more understandable. Yami was sent to Lucius because of the Clifford ritual and Asta was sent to the Land of the Rising Sun for whatever reason. Something like an exchange or a communication between two people. Maybe one manipulates the other. In any case, something is happening between the Land of the Rising Sun and the Clover Kingdom in relation to all the events that are happening with or because of Lucius Zogratis. As I said, the fact that Ryu was already waiting for Asta makes him suspicious. Of course, maybe Ryu is not the person who he seems to be, but someone else who has turned into Ryu. Maybe Astaroth, which is why Ryu has no magic, because all his magic was given to Lucius. All Astaroth has left is his eye. Also, as explained earlier, Lucifugus might have something to do with it. But all this is a gigantic topic with many things that need to be considered. Before we can draw a clear conclusion, we need to research more and of course, wait for the official release. So, Yami's family will be a topic for next week. That's it for today folks, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to smash the like button and if you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe with the notification bell turned on. See you guys in the next video, Yami out.